Okay, what we're going to do today is um, we're doing a hangy, moldy style hangy cooker above ground. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is we've got the cooker at the back here already heating up. We've put the um, element on high just to warm up the hot plate. What we're going to do is we're using um, pork, uh, pork strips or pork belly and chicken thighs, and also we've got a mixture of veggies as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay the uh, pork strips in the basket, just nice and simple. It's nothing uh, too difficult to put in. Um, what I try and do is just sort of try and spread it around the outside first and then work your way into the middle. Um, that way you know you've got the, you can get as much as you can in there. What I try and do is just try and zigzag them so they can give a bit of gaps, you know, if you're sitting it on top of each other. Uh, just sort of uh, give the heat the opportunity to, to uh, filter through the gaps and cook, um, you know, just to try and spread the heat load through the whole uh, meat. Okay, we've got all the pork in. We might even have room for some chicken. We'll poke them in. Um, yeah, I, I sort of have the skin up. Um, there's no preference to how you want to put it in. Um, uh, but what you try and achieve once again is not to try and just sit them all flat on each other. Just zigzag them around so you can, you know, you've got gaps for it to, um, for the heat to breathe through. The other thing too is that not to worry too much about the bulging, I mean it's all going to drop down eventually once it heats up and starts to cook everything will all drop down. Okay so the next stage um, we'll get the veggies in. Uh, there's, once again what I'd like to do is try and keep the veggies packed to one side rather than having it on top of each other. And the reason for that is so that if you wanted to get to the kumas you don't have to lift all the other veggies off to get down to the to where but whatever uh, veggie you want to get to. So what I'll do is try and put the kumas all to one side. Now we'll put the spuds on the bottom here. Try and take this down. These are nice um, new potatoes they look like with the skin on which is quite good. It's Always good to keep the skin on if you can, um, just adds to the flavour. So there we go, so we're ready to put it in. Um, the hot plate's nice and hot. Okay, the next stage we're going to do is we're going to drop a, a, the secret ingredients and it's just manuka sawdust. Um, this is an important part of the process because we don't want to uh, put too much in it might take the food. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put the um, manuka sawdust, our magic gradients, onto the hot plate. Um, and this is probably one of the important parts of the process. Um, we don't use a lot, and I know it's hard to believe, but um, it is the truth. Um, so when you see this, make sure you don't put too much in. This is the amount I'm going to be putting onto the hot plate. And I know it's hard to believe, and please <laughs> trust me, um, you don't want to put too much more than that on the hot plate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drop that on the middle of the hot plate. Whoops. Try and keep it all in the centre. Wow, that was hot. And actually, I might just put a little bit more because that's hotter than I expected, and that's actually smoking already. So I'm going to put a little bit more on. A bit onto the hot plate. So we'll just bring it over to me. Put it on the side, and then we'll throw the veggies on. Okay, and then we we'll put the housing over the top, slide it over the top. And there you go. Now, just one thing to remember, this side of the smoking process is what we call the first part of it. Because it's only a minimal amount of manuka on the base, what we don't want to do is lift the lid so we lose that, that small amount. The manuka is not to smoke it or to cook it or anything, but what it does is it lines the food what little there is. And when the steaming process takes place, what it does is it mixes with the juices and that on the base and then 
the superheat will come back through and then force the smoke into the food at a later stage. So we'll set that there for probably an um, hour and a half, maybe two hours at the most, uh, depending on the ambient temperatures. So we've just um, put the food and everything in, it's smoking away now. We'd like it to smoke for probably about, say, 10 minutes. Uh, you don't want to go any more than probably 10, maybe 15 at the most. A lot of it would depend on the ambient temperatures outside, but 10 to 15 minutes is all you want to smoke before you decide to lift the lid. Okay? Um, when we go to lifting the lid, we would next, um, the next stage is to put some uh, water in. Uh, we'd probably put around about a litre of water to start the um, steaming process. We're just coming to the end of the smoking stage, uh, which is about probably 10 minutes. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some water, okay? And um, before we add water, the thing to do is when you're lifting the lid, um, just be careful because, you know, you get a gust of heat coming back on it. So always lift uh, away from you, you know what I mean? So you're tipping the housing or the lid up, so it, it pushes out that way. You've got your lid for protection in front of you, okay? So there's... It's starting to smoke a bit now, which is what we want. Okay, and we're going to add a bit of water in there. And we're not going to put all the water in because it's, it is a hot day. Click the lid back on. Make sure the lid clicks down, okay, just to hold that pressure in. What the lid's job is to hold a certain amount of pressure before releasing the steam. Okay. From here on now, we, um, we let it cook for about uh, an hour and a half uh, to about two hours, depending on, like I said, the temperatures, um, you know, how long we've cooked. The good thing about it is that you can lift the lid and check it every now and again. I'll be checking it for uh, in the next hour or so, just to see how the gravy and that is building up on the bottom. And also just to make sure that it doesn't run out of juice so it doesn't burn and you get the tainting going back through the food. If there is a juice, uh, like if you're running low of juice on the bottom, uh, just to add a little bit more water. Just so you understand, the, the secret is, is that if you put too much water in, you're going to steam cook it, which is what we don't want. If you don't put enough water in, it's going to burn. So you're trying to keep that happy medium in terms of making sure that there's enough gravy on the bottom that it's not going to dry out and burn. And at the same time, you don't want the gravy to be too uh, moist that it's going to steam cook it and water down the gravy, which is the flavour that's going back through the food. What we're going to do now is we're just going to have a look at the, um, just going to check the, to make sure that the juices uh, there's plenty of juice on the bottom and that it's not going to be burning at all if we needed to add more water. Um, so we're just going to open it up and have a quick look and see what all those juices are. When you're lifting it up, the idea is not to lift it, but to tap one side just to break the seal, to rock it until it breaks the seal. Um, and there you go. Nice juices down in there. So that looks okay, there's plenty of juice there for us to uh, let it run for another, probably another hour. See a bit of the colouring there already. So we'll just poke it down now and see, check again probably in the next half an hour.